In this tutorial, we're going to learn to work with sliders in Articulate Storyline. We're actually going to work on this practice activity. So what we have is a slider, and I can drag the slider to learn about the waning or waxing uh, moon phases. So you can see how that works. So what we're going to do is build this, and then you'll learn a little bit more about working with the sliders and some of the things you can do. And then download the practice file and practice the activity, and you'll get a pretty good handle on how sliders work. So here's our practice file, and a couple things you'll notice. We only have two things on the slide here, so if I go to Timeline, you'll notice I have my text right here, my Moon Faces text, and I have this rectangle. Now the rectangle is invisible, so this is our normal state. If we come to the States tab, you can see the normal state is invisible. And then I just created State, so I created my transparent rectangle, and then I just created a state, so when I double click on it, I created the state, and then I just added this content on here. And then you can see each state has its own content. And this kind of points one thing out about the states, is that you're not limited to that rectangle shape. So this is the rectangle shape, but when I look at another state, I really have the full range of the slide to work with. So I added the moon image, the text here, and some text here. And so it just goes through. All right, so those are the states that we have on that. So we really have one shape on the screen. We have the shape here, the rectangle shape. And what we need to do is set our initial state. So we're going to start with the initial state being the full moon. So we'll go to States. We're going to set the initial state here to 5, which is our full moon state. So that's our initial state on that object. And then what we want to do is have a slider. And then when I slide it to the left, I want to show the waning state, so 1 through 4. When I slide it to the right, I want to show state 6, 7, 8, 9. So let's go ahead and create our slider. We're going to go to Insert, go to our Controls. We'll just choose this slider here. I'm going to draw it on the screen, and that looks pretty good for me. And then what we want to do now is we'll set our all the properties for the slider. We'll make sure everything's working right and then we'll format it. So let's set our properties first. So I come up to Slider Tools. Now in this case, we know the slider variable. We'll just keep it Slider 1. So what we're going to do is we've got nine states. So if we look at the states here, we select this and we look at the states, we've got 1 through 9 is what we're concerned with. So let's come back to our slider. And what we want to do is set this to 1. So that's our starting value, and 9 is our end value. So now we're working in that range of 1 through 9. And we'll set our initial state value at 5. So this way it's going to be at the full moon. And now what we want to do is set some triggers. So let's add a trigger. Now the triggers are always what do you want to do, when do you want to do it. In this case I want to change the state of this moon box to its appropriate number when the slider's value is at that number. So let's add a trigger. What do I want to do? I want to change the state of moon box to 1 when the slider moves, so slider 1, and the condition's going to be when it's equal to 1. Hit OK, and then I can see that on the trigger, 1, 1. Now the nice thing with Storyline is I can copy and paste the trigger, so I'm just going to copy this trigger. And then I'm going to paste it. So now I can just change this to 2, and change this number to 2. And, and then just repeat that. So go ahead and repeat that, and then we'll come back when all that's done. All right, so I just added my ninth one. Now a couple tips when you're working with triggers. Uh, sometimes these trigger panels can fill up. So you can always collapse the slide layers, and then you can see more of the triggers, or you can pull this out, and then you can see the trigger panel by itself. Now when I create a bunch of triggers like this, what I want to do is make sure everything's set up right. And this is where reading through them is really easy. So I can go 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, and I can see it. So I can see it's all in order, 1 through 9, 1 through 9. So now it looks like all my triggers are set properly. I'm going to put this back in place. Let's preview it and see if it's working. And it's working. So what I notice is the starting point is in the center like I wanted it. And then when I drag it to the left, it shows these. And when I drag it to the right, it shows these. So everything's working exactly the way I want to. Now what I want to do is change the format on the slider. So we can make the slider look any way we want to. So we're going to go up to Format, 
One thing I like to do is we'll just take the slider track here. I'm going to make it a little sleeker. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color. This is where I like to use the color picker when I'm using images. So I'm going to come up to Track Fill, choose the eyedropper, and I'll just choose a color from the image so it'll look like it belongs there. So I can see that. I'm going to turn the outline off. And then I've got a nice track here. So I can see that there's a track, but it's not just it's not standing out really strong in the image. Now the other thing we can do is this. Uh, marker right here or the thumb, I can change that to an image. So we actually just want to use a moon image. So to do that I select it. So I'm going to come up to the thumb fill and I'm just going to use a picture. And you should have this picture here, the moon picture in your download. So go ahead and select that. Now you can see the marker is a moon. Now it's got this outline so I want to turn off the border. And if I want to make it a little larger I can just make my track larger and then I can play around with the moon. So I can keep the moon a little larger. I'm going to add a little shadow to the moon here. So we'll just do a round shadow here. It's got a little subtlety to it. And then I can make the track as large or small as I want it to be. So if we look at this now, we have a nice elegant interaction. I can drag my moon and see how the moon phases work. So a lot of really neat things that you can do with the sliders. So go ahead and practice the activity. That will give you a good feel of working with the state changes. You can look at how the states were created so you can learn a little bit more. And then you can copy and paste the trigger. So you get a lot of practice uh, with this activity.